From the flanks of the Southern Alps, glaciers once flowed west to the Tasman. They've long since gone, leaving in their wake fertile valleys ideal for dairy farming. The valleys are the blessing of the Alps. Their curse is rain, the interminable rain that West Coast farmers have learned to accept as a part of their lives. Jean Dorick, 38 years old, mother of three, divorced, a farmer and happy in her work. Jean came to the west coast with her school teacher husband. With some help from her father, Jean bought a block of land and created a dairy farm, milking 45 cows. In 1976, Jean separated from her husband. He continued teaching. Jean continued farming. Despite her best efforts, the farm at Hari Hari just wasn't big enough to be economic. To keep herself and her three sons, Jean trapped possums, cooked at the local hotel and did relief milking to supplement the farm income. It couldn't go on. She needed more land. The Lands and Surveys Farm Settlement Scheme seemed the only way to do it. To be eligible for the scheme, Jean had to convince the settlement committee that she had the skill to raise calves, milk cows and generally run a farm. Jean applied for all seven farms up for ballot on the west coast. She was lucky, there were only seven applicants. The luck of the draw decided that Jean would get Waitaha number three. On June the 11th, she took possession of 111 hectares and all the problems associated with calving and breaking in new cows on a new farm. Jean already had 45 of her own cows. Lands and Surveys supplied her with 70 in calf heifers. This season she'll be milking 124 cows to produce 14,000 kilograms of milk fat. Hard work alone does not make a farmer. Jean had to find $36,000 cash deposit for the Deferred Payment Farm Purchase Plan. By selling her Hari Hari farm, plus the value of her 45 cows, Jean found the money. Now all she has to do is make it a success. brand new Tenerside herringbone milking shed is luxury after the old converted sawmill that Jean was used to at Harihari. But the work's the same, demanding the same skills in handling stock. Pasture management takes high priority in Jean's working day. The new farm is not fully developed. The good pasture is reserved for the milking cows. The springers, cows yet to calve, get by on a daily ration of poorer pasture at the back of the farm.
farming on the west coast poses some special problems for Jean. The lie of the land is lateral, flat. Undeveloped, the pasture tends to be rank, with rushes and moss in the wetter areas. The Southern Alps form a natural rain trap, over 3,000 millimetres of rain annually. So drainage is a major project, Jean will have to get underway as soon as possible. Size and strength aren't essential. Jean has found more ways to approach problems than head on. I do think that being a woman, that approaching problems does definitely need to be thought about. And if I've got a difficult job to do, often if you just stand there and think about it for five or ten minutes, you can work out an easy way to do it. I adapted the idea of using a headlock for dehorning because you can't hold a calf down and burn its horns off at the same time. You either have to have a strong man to sit on them while they kick and thump around or some way of restraining them. Done. Heavy physical work is something I've always been able to cope with quite well. It was a question that was asked at the land settlement interviews, and with me being a woman, of whether I would be able to manage on that kind of thing. But I find that there's no great problem in digging a hole, um, straining posts, digging in my fence posts. I do have to get help from time to time if I'm having to handle heavy machinery and I might have to use a jack on it because I'm not strong enough to lift it. But you can do things like use a block and tackle, use a jack. But then again, that happens even for men farmers. They have to go and get neighbours to help them with certain jobs. And there are times and jobs on dairy farms which do involve two or three or four people. Jean's determination to be a farmer carried her through some hard times at Hari Hari. But in the end, she had to look further afield. The farm I had previous to this was uneconomic. And um, through Lands and Survey, they encouraged me to go for a balance farm. And fortunately, they accepted my application. And I was lucky when it came to rolling the marbles out of the barrel. My, my number was third out, so I got the farm of my choice, which was here in the White House. Oh, hello, Dick. Hello, Come on Jean, in. How are you? Lands and Survey's involvement with Jean's new dairy farm didn't end the day Jean took the place over. Dick Alcock is a senior field officer with Lands and Surveys, and he makes regular visits to advise Jean in farming and financial matters. For the first few years, Lands and Surveys keep a close watch on all financial matters. When an applicant gets a ballot farm, all assets are tied up in the deal. Everything is in the budget. $4,000 a year for personal drawings and any Cameron changes County, in stock good. numbers must have lands and survey approval. That's pretty good going. No doubt you've been pretty busy. The feed situation is quite reasonable, I'm pleased to say. The, I was very conservative over the winter and it's yeah. paid can, off. Can you spare half an hour to have a wander around when we get Soon. a few mm. backs down? Yes, that's fine. Good. The only problem I've really got, Dick, is this one that I'd budgeted to only raise half a dozen beef calves. And, uh, with the grass situation like it is, how will it be if I, instead of putting those six on the bobby calf truck, seeing their nice little Frisian beef shorthorn crosses, I raise an extra six or seven. How many heifer replacements were you going to rear? Uh, 25. 25 mm. plus, how many did you say? Well, I've already arranged to raise six. If I kept another six or seven, that'd give me about a dozen. And you're satisfied that the feed position is satisfactory? Well, at the moment it is. The only thing, of course, that, that'll concern you folks is that it'll reduce the amount of milk that's going in the vat. Yes, although, um, you know, you'll pick it up otherwise. I'd go along with that. Good. Traditionally, lands and surveys balloted their farms as fully developed units. These days, they let them go earlier, leaving the new owner to finish development. 
as a quick settlement unit, there isn't the subdivision done, the water supplies are not completed, there's a lot of um, extensions of drains, culverts needing to be put in, gateways needing to be have gates put on them, be fully um, developed. But on the other hand, they're correspondingly cheaper because you're not having to buy a completely and utterly fully set up unit. Mm. They are nice, cheap farms. The day-to-day -day jobs Jean must deal with are common to all dairy farmers, but there's one problem peculiar to southern Westland. Isolation. The southern Alps are a formidable barrier between the coast and many of the facilities essential to farmers. Calves that aren't to be kept as replacements are sent away as bobbies. By the time transport costs are covered, each bobby calf is worth four to eight dollars. Hardly worth the trouble. Handling dairy cows takes patience and skill. Jean Dorick has three generations of dairy farming behind her. Stock work is certainly a lot of it is skill and experience of knowing what kind of reactions you're likely to get out of cattle. But, well, I was brought up on a farm and I just grew up with cows and other livestock around me and I just tend to take it for granted. The same with handling calves, teaching them to feed out of a bucket. Really, I think stockmanship is the most important thing in dairy farming. If you can't handle your animals and you haven't got them cooperative and liking you, you're not going to get very good results out of them. So I-class stockmanship is very high on the agenda. Jean's friend, Alison Haynes, is ideally qualified to help out during her holidays. She's a herd tester, so she's well used to working in milking sheds. And Jean's 13-year-old son, Barry, can handle some of the daily chores after school. Well, there's those four bobbies in the pen over there. Yeah. Bring them in and put them in the shed and feed them. In the shed with the bobbies, there's only um, three on buckets, that new blue roan one and the two that have got the ear tags in. Yeah. The others are sucker jobs, and the big calves and the big shoes. You know how to do that job. OK? Right. Right. OK, see you after milking, love. In the shed itself, I've had a couple of my old girls really quite create. They haven't liked the new setup, strange shed. You get one or two that you have to leg rope or beat up to teach them who's boss. But most of them, uh, when they get to know you, they're quite cooperative. If you're gentle with them and they like being milked, they're quite happy to cooperate. I do confess that I spoil them and I've got them named. I haven't yet named the 70 of the lands and surveys, but um, they'll get names all in due course. After all these heifers to break in, I must confess that I feel as if I could sleep for a week. I, I think that coming into a new place like this with a great challenge, definitely I'm, I'm keyed up to get on top of it at the moment, but there won't be any chance of sleeping for a week until June next winter.